What is happening, people? And welcome back. It is Harry Scarf from Scarfy Spurs Talk. And today we're going to be discussing whether Tottenham Hotspur chairman Daniel Levy has changed. Uh, I'm trying to be as balanced as possible. I'm really keen to get uh, your opinion. Um, you know, so if you are listening live on you, if you are listening on YouTube, should I say, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. We're trying to get to 2K by the end of 2024. So that'd be massively appreciate. If you like what you're seeing, smash the like button, turn notifications bell on, and get involved in the comments where you stand at this moment in time with Daniel Levy. Does he deserve credit, etc.? He's still fully behind him, fully out. Let me know in the comments below. But if you are listening on a podcast platform, Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music, Anchor, uh, don't forget to drop us a follow and a five star review. A lot of you do listen on there as well. So, big up to each and every single one of you. will be available on here after. Um, and head over to YouTube as well if you're listening on podcast platform. Pause and go over to YouTube, search Scarfy Spurs Talk, and don't forget to smash that subscribe button while you're there. But let's crack straight into it. Has Daniel Levy changed? So, where do I stand at this moment in time? Have mistakes been made by Daniel Levy in the past? Absolutely. Have some managerial points been wrong? Yes. You know, has the recruitment been wrong? You know, that season where we signed on Don Blair so Yes. Um, there, there, there has been mistakes, but ultimately I feel right now, uh, I think we, we're really stable in terms of where we're going. You look at FFP for, for me, for a prime example, right? You know, where you've got, like, use a January transfer window as an example. It felt like it felt like just Tottenham's transfer window. So I think we played it right with the new stadium. I do generally believe that is a game changer. Uh, so I think first you've got that. I think the, the appointment of Ange Postle Goglu was absolutely spot on. And I answering the question openly and straight away, I do think Daniel Levy has changed. And what makes me think that? He's like in January, we go and, you know, we get Dragas in, for example, a third strong centre-back. I don't think we would have had three strong centre-backs previously. And I think, you know, a lot of people say, has Andrew Postacoglu deserved the right to be backed? Absolutely. And, and you know, if I was chairman, I'd be wanting to back Andrew Postacoglu more than I would, you know, your, your managers like Mourinho and Conte. Because you know that even the serial winners, you know, Mourinho, Conte, you know, they're not going to be here realistically any longer than about 18 months uh, to two years, if that. Um, so, you know, why would you back someone that is not going to beat your football club long and is going to leave it in a worse place than when they came into? Would you look at Andrew Postel and I, I, you know, I think it, it, it leaves us in a very good place. I think if he feels like he's backed and feels like he gets what he wants, he's been listened to, respected, and ultimately performed on the pitch, the fans are still behind him, obviously a big factor. I think he can, can commit long term. And I, I think that we have it right in terms of trying to find the next talent. And you've got youngsters like Star under Doggy that we've committed to 2030. So credit to the club for that. Um, so I think we, we've got a lot, lot right this season. And I'm so excited for the future under this manager. I think under a stable ownership that are willing to invest in this manager at this moment in time. As I said, of course, mistakes are made. The latest one in for me is the scrapping of senior concessions. It's wrong. Of course, it is. It should still be reversed. But for me, it's, it's still there's still time to put it right. It's never too late you know, in, in that aspect for me. But yeah, mistakes have been made, absolutely. Uh, and I get people's frustration in terms of we haven't won a trophy, a major trophy since 2008. That was before I was born, in fact. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an awful long time now. Uh, we're talking 15, 16 years. So I get that and that is inexcusable on its own. However, you know, at this moment in time, I feel that like we're on the right path for trophies. And I get, again, Spurs fans will say, we've, we've been through this, we've seen this. But I do feel that this is different. As I said, we're getting that third strong set about committing players for the future. And, and for me, we've had two excellent windows, uh, like Van der Ven, for example. Absolutely fantastic now. But at that time, 43 player, and that is the ultimately most important thing. Of course, for me now, he's worth, he's probably worth 43 million, if not more. One year of experience, if you like, in the Bundesliga for Wolfsburg, as good as he'd done, it's one year. Like Vicario as well with Empoli. You know, we take that risk where he hasn't had long to prove himself. He's only really had one year uh, in, in, in the top flight, if you like, and, and doing it consistently as the number one. So we take risks like that. And, and I'm really happy. I'm going to be open with this. I'm really happy with his ownership at this moment in time. I think we're going in the right direction. Uh, I think that, you know, they're doing things to try and engage with fans you know, and, and try and improve the atmosphere, like the light shows, clever ideas. Of course, there's still mistakes. I'd like to see Levy and Co speak more in front of camera, address the fans. There's a lot more that still can be done. 
But I think ultimately now, you know, he's done what he's done. It's down to Ange Postecoglou in the team to produce. I think we have the right manager. Uh, and I think we've really seen like what it could look like long term and, and how exciting the Ange Postecoglou project is. We all said at the start of the season that you know, there's going to be bumps in the road. We we'll take a batter in here and there if we see the the bigger picture. But what does frustrate me, if I'm being honest, is that you hear no talks of protest or, or you know, Levy out banners or anything like that. No talks about Daniel Levy the whole season, but we lose 3-0 to Fulham. And the Daniel Levy out and then the get out of my club. It, all, all of that starts on, on social media and the thought of protesting, boycotting, all of that, different ideas to disrupt him and the club. Why, why does it happen after a loss? For me, it's hypocrisy. And, it, you know, if, if you're going to want Daniel Levy, going, I, I get you give Andrew Postecoglou a chance, but you still stand to your word that you're leaving out. You don't go quiet and then... Because let's be very clear, that Fulham defeat isn't on Daniel Levy. There was options on the bench, Werner. It was, it was for me, a prime example. We had on the bench for Charleston. Quite better to control the game. There was options on that Spurs bench pretty much everywhere you look at Could So it, could it be stronger? Should it be stronger long term? Absolutely. But for me, what the club have provided Ange Postecoglou in two windows is, is pretty special. For me, basically built to start an 11. And I think squad depth will come over time. Two, three windows. I think, yeah, we want a stronger bench. But what we've done in two windows, you put it into to context with you, Vicario. Madison, Van der Ven, Johnson, Werner, Dragos. We, we bought. We basically completely. We've done a rebuild in two windows. It's incredible. It's a few, what six, seven, eight months. So the club deserve credit for that. Wherever you stand with Daniel Levy, and I, I know that I defend him a lot, I defend the club a lot. But for me, right now, we need to get behind the team um, and, and support them. Yeah, of course, the summer's a big window, like it always is, uh, and, and we, we need reinforcements. We know that we probably need a. Uh, like let's say a backup left back to be able to compete with a doggy, whether that be Alfie Doherty, I think is a good example for Luton Robertson with Fulham. Uh, we probably need a number nine to, to meet, work with, compete with, support uh, Richarlison. So, you know, if a midfielder goes as well. So, there's, there's reinforcements we need in the summer, but you have to give for me the club credit where credit is due. But where do you stand on Daniel Levy? I think he's changed. Um, I do think so. And I think the appointment of Scott Mann is right. I think he stepped away from football a little bit. But have your say in the comments below. Do you trust Daniel Levy? You still don't get involved in the comments below. But if you are listening uh, on YouTube, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. It's free to do so. And it ultimately helps the channel and this podcast grow. So that'd be massively appreciated. Smash the like button. Get involved in the comments. Do you really matter here at the channel? And remember, this is just my opinion. Um, so, you know, debate the opinion, not me. Um, that is just what I think, and you're all entitled to an opinion. Podcast platform, if you're listening, drop us a five-star review and a follow if you liked what you're seeing. I mean, if you don't like it, leave a one-star review, but hopefully you'd, you you know you liked it. Uh, but also head over to YouTube, Scarfy Spurs. So if you want to follow me, you can there, Harry Scarf 22 But most importantly, go check out the channel. We've got Premier League show now, Tuesday night, 7 p.m. with Newcastle uh, content creator and YouTuber John Sinclair. We've got one Wednesday night, 8 p.m. With, with special guests again called Oris Talks Football. We've got the usual top and content. Pretty much content every day on the channel, so go check it out. But as you always say, up the Spurs.